Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com and I got another project to share with you. This was a, a quick finish up of a build that had been started. Happy to say it's completed, tested, in the water, working great. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the boat, see how it works. So before we get into all the nitty gritty technical details of this boat that I know a lot of you are not particularly interested in, let's have just a couple of minutes of footage of this in my pool so you can see it, what kind of speed it has and the control that we have in that ballast system. So enjoy. I really enjoyed operating this boat, even though it was uh, a little big for my swimming pool, it still had the opportunity to show me what kind of performance this boat has. Uh, turning radius is really, really good because it has quite large rudders and uh, it is also quite fast, as you saw in the footage earlier. The thing that I really like about this is that OTW pump-based ballast system that allowed this boat to basically hover completely motionless, submerged in the water there. In practical application, that would never happen in the real world. Uh, typically, boats would be moving forward and then dive, but it's still cool to show off at the pond or pool. Let's talk about the uh, kit itself. Now, this is an offering from OTW out of the UK, and you can purchase this kit uh, through my website at nautilusdrydocks.com. It's done in 172nd scale, which puts the overall length at 47 inches and gives it a beam of five and a half inches, which is lots of room for the big four and a quarter inch OTW dive module or any dive module that you would care to install in it. Um, some background on the Valiant class boat. Basically they were put into service back in 1966 and there was only two of them actually built. Uh, there was the flagship which was the Valiant itself and the second one was called Warspit. Uh, and both of these were based off of the earlier Dreadnought class submarine that the UK came out with I believe in 1960 if I recall correctly. It's a great boat a great design it works really really well so this was uh, another kind of quick turnaround project for me uh, when i got this boat a lot of the work was actually done and, and done fairly well actually um the, the hull was all assembled the linkages were run in the back all of the bearings were in place for the propeller so that uh, was all basically done 
got a new cylinder for it. I ended up having to get that all set up and ready to go and uh, installed a new radio for it. Let's take a look at, uh, at each one of these components individually. This is the, uh, the radio system that controls the functions of the boat. It's a VEX6 channel computerized radio system. Uh, the way that I've currently got it set up, bow planes are on the uh, right stick and rudder is as well. Throttle is on the left stick and this is a blank channel on the, uh, on the left stick horizontal. On the back, channel five is the um, ballast control. You push the down button to submerge and you push the up button to surface. And then on the back, channel six is the rear dive plane override uh, because this does have an automatic pitch controller integrated into it. Um, everything is powered by a 12 volt nickel metal hydride battery pack that has been waterproofed. Some heavy duty uh, heat shrink on there. Um, we've got a waterproof connector that serves as main power on and off. You simply connect it to turn the model on and disconnect it to turn the model off. Taking a look at the forward compartment of the dive module, and this is a four and a quarter inch OTW dive module that's sized perfectly for this model. Um, we have our main ballast pump. This is a, uh, a geared pump that runs through a solenoid valve to prevent any sort of back pressure from pushing the water back out again. And we've got a forward servo for our forward dive planes. Uh, going into the middle section there, we've got a little eight inch uh, ballast tank. And uh, one thing to note there, um, there is a small sixteenth of an inch hole that's drilled at the very, very top of this ballast tank. And what that allows the system to do is move some of that air into the forward and rear compartments of the cylinder. And that makes it so that the pressure is not so great inside and it allows it to fill quicker and easier. Now some people might be a little bit worried uh, that there's actually a hole that runs into the dry compartment, but fortunately there is the fail-safe built in. You can see that top brass probe in there and there's more on the bottom and basically those tell the system when the tank is full and when the tank is empty. So when the, the ballast tank is filled all the way, it hits that probe, shuts off the pump and uh, the water level will never make it up to that vent. Uh, going in the back there, we've got a six channel receiver. We've got an automatic pitch controller and uh, our rudder and dive plane servos. Looking on the bottom, we've got our electronic speed controller and our main drive motor uh, running straight out the back there. Um, last thing to note on the forward section here is the um, dive manager and that controls the ballast system and that's got a built in fail safe as well. So that is the main dive module that houses all of the expensive bits and pieces of the remote controlled submarine. If we take a look at the hull itself, it basically uh, came to me as it sits uh, right now. We've got some really cool uh, masts and periscopes that are included on there. I added the, uh, the water line and just some light uh, scum underneath the, the water line just for some visual interest and to give some indication about where that water line is supposed to be. Now, from what I understand, the uh, Valiant class submarines typically actually have the dive planes up uh, in the upper hull there, but the earlier uh, Dreadnought actually had them lower and that is how the previous owner elected to model this particular boat. Uh, and the cool thing about that is now the forward dive planes are actually housed on the lower hull, which means all of our control surfaces and linkages are in the bottom. And we don't need to worry about crazy, uh, you know, magnetic linkages uh, for connecting dive planes from the upper hull into that lower hull assembly. Getting into the boat is uh, really simple, actually. You just uh, flick that little switch forward. Uh, a really slick system implemented by the previous owner. Uh, lift up from the back, slide forward, and everything comes apart. You'll see that this uh, lip here is what retains the forward part of the hull. And this is traditionally what is referred to as a Z-cut 
because uh, it goes up all the way to the back and then up again forming a, a Z shape. Taking a look inside we can see the uh, linkage for our forward dive planes in there with a magnetic coupler. We've got a battery cradle in the front. We have all of our self-adhesive ballast lay low down in the keel there. And then we've got uh, the rear connections for our uh, dive planes and rudders in there. And these are all adjustable. You simply loosen off these wheel collars and you can adjust each one of these control surfaces individually to make sure that they are oriented correctly. Installation of this cylinder really could not be easier. You simply uh, grab the entire unit and drop it into place and that's it. These knurled nuts fit into grooves in these bulkheads uh, and that creates the proper alignment. Then you use a heavy duty rubber band here and stretch that through these eye hooks just like that. Now this unit is completely locked down, can't go anywhere. Connect our forward dive plane linkages and that just snaps in place. We'll connect our rear ones and they snap in place. And then uh, the last thing that we need to do is slide this propeller assembly forward until it can't go forward anymore. Taking a closer look at what I just uh, did there, again, magnetic linkages simply um, snap into place without the need for any uh, mechanical connection. And this entire rear drive shaft assembly moves forward and back. And you just slip that over that drive shaft until it can't move anymore. Tighten down the set screw, ensuring that it is oriented to the flat that's been machined in the uh, drive shaft there. And once that's done, it's completely locked in, can't move anywhere, ready to go. Up in the forward part of the boat, basically, we're just going to take our battery uh, and the end that does not have the wires is going to slip in straight to the back there. I'm gonna feed this cable underneath the drive plane shaft and this is all ready to be connected to power up the model. All right, it is time to power up the model. And uh, obviously, as it always happens, you turn the transmitter on first. What we're gonna do now is we're just going to connect the battery. And we're gonna tighten down that waterproof connection collar so that that is a completely waterproof connection. So everything is uh, connected and functional. Let's uh, test the different functions. Uh, let's start with the rudder. We've got full travel left and right. Uh, dive planes up at the, at the front here. The rear dive plane override and the throttle. And I want you just to listen to how smooth this is. That is a smooth drivetrain. I like it a lot. Um, and then uh, let's check out the ballast system here really quickly. I'm gonna hit down and now I just want to note this pump does not like to be run dry. So just a few seconds to test it is fine, but no longer than that. There we go. Everything is tested, functional, and ready for the pond. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of this OTW Valiant Class Submarine. My name is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. Uh, email me anytime, bob at rc-sub.com. Or if you go to my website, there's a little chat box in the bottom. You can type me a message uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for joining me, everyone. We will catch you next time.